Today, inshallah, I want to cover a story that we find in the books of history that existed about approximately a thousand years before the coming of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But it was a, about a man who had an impact, though he existed a thousand years before the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he impacted the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, eventually. So we find in the books of history that when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he came to Medina, he was riding his camel. And you have to understand that he came to Majid al-Quba first, where Majid al-Quba is. And right across Majid al-Quba, there's a garden there which exists till today. And there was some time before where this garden was locked up. The Saudi government now has opened up this garden. And now it's become one of the places where often when people go for ziyarat, they usually stop at this garden. This was the place where initially, uh, when Abu Bakr an and the Prophet وسلم, they came, people did not know who the Prophet وسلم, was. So it was that time where the Prophet وسلم, was actually walking, and Abu Bakr an, he was also with the Prophet, وسلم, but people had mistakenly assumed that it was Abu Bakr who was the Prophet. So as soon as Abu Bakr وسلم, sat down, everyone began to come and do his khidmah, and everyone began to come and serve him. And the Prophet وسلم, he just took you know, a few steps away and he sat down by himself. At that time, the, sh the sun was beating down on Rasulullah وسلم, So Abu Bakr وسلم, he got up and he put a shade right above the Prophet وسلم, And that was the very first time that many people in Medina who had never ever experienced or had ever come in front of Rasulullah that is when they began to realize that this is the Prophet of Allah and so then the Prophet وسلم, he established Majid al Quba, he stayed there for several days, and then now he's coming to Medina for the very first time. And you have to understand that right now also, it's almost like if you think about it, it's a 45 to 50 minute walk right now from uh, Majid Nabawi to Majid al Quba. And right now, the government has even like created a pathway, a direct pathway from Majid Nabawi all the way to Majid al Quba. If anyone wants to walk it, they can walk it. So the Prophet وسلم, is coming to Majid al Quba. And at that time, he's on his animal. And many people asked the Prophet وسلم, to come and stay at, at their home, you know, out of respect and honor uh, for themselves. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that, please leave this animal alone wherever it goes and wherever it stops, that is where I will stay. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned in the books of Sirah that it came and stopped at the house of Abu Ayyub Ansari radiallahu an. Now the question is that why the house of Abu Ayyub Ansari radiallahu an? And by the way, for perspective purposes, if you go right now to Majid Nabawi right now, where the Green Dome is, there's of course there's a wall right there around the Green Dome. If you take perhaps like, you know, probably 15, 20 steps, not exactly forward, a little diagonally, that is where the house of Abu Ayyub Ansari radiallahu anhu was originally, okay? So just to give you some perspective, if you ever go next time, just try to understand and try to visualize this was, this was the house of Abu Ayyub Ansari. The question is why the house of Abu Ayyub Ansari? Here's the, here's the interesting thing. So we find that in the past, there was a man who was a king of Yemen. His name was Tubba. Okay, his name was Tubba. And there's different historical records that we find. So I'm going to cover both of them. There's two primary ones. I'm going to cover both of them. The beginning of each story is different, but the ending is the same for both stories, for, for both historical variations. The one variation that we find is that this man, Tubba, was a person who would go to different places, conquer those places, and move on. That's, what, that's the type of king that he had. He had an entourage with him. He had army. He had um, people who had studied previous scriptures and so forth. So what happened was that he was making his way from Yemen upwards, and the very first place that he came across, the major place was Mecca. He went to Mecca, and he began to, you know, usually he would get like an invite, he would get like, you know, a warm welcome. Here he did not receive a warm welcome. And you got to understand also that when you, you know, when you go to, the, when you go to Mecca, the Quraysh were a little more like, you know, tougher nature people. So what happened was that he felt that, you know what, this place, I'm going to conquer this place and I'm going to wipe out the people of this place. It's mentioned that he suffered a sickness and because of that sickness, he quickly left Mecca 
And, but at the same time, the people there, or amongst his entourage, they began to tell him that this is a very sacred place that was built by Ibrahim alayhi salam and his son and so forth. And rather than you thinking about destroying this place, rather you should revere this place. So he was, by the way, Tuba was the very first man who clothed the Kaaba. Okay, he was the very first person who clothed the Kaaba. And there's no difference in this. So, nonetheless, he made his way upward and he came to Yathrib, which is current day Medina. And there, many of his learned scholars, they said that you can move forward with your army, but we want to stay here in Yathrib. We find something very special about this place. So they said that what is so special about this place? And they be, he began to inquire. And once again, there were a lot of people living there who are amongst the Jewish community. So he began to inquire from them. And they said that the reason why we live here is because we have read in our previous scriptures that this is perhaps a place, perhaps a place where a final prophet will come. And here we are waiting that, uh, that final prophet. At that time, Tubba basically said that I'm going to wait also for that final prophet. Okay, so this is one variation. The second variation is that Tubba came all the way to Medina first. He never made a stop in Mecca. He came to Medina first. He left his uh, son over there. He went out to take care of something else for, for several weeks. He came back to Medina to find out that his son was killed. And at that time, he said, I'm going to rage war against the people of Medina. And hence, a war did break out. A small war did break out. But what was very peculiar, very strange about the people of Medina or Yathrib at that time was that Tubba began to notice that as we are fighting them throughout the day, these same people, our opposition, they're feeding us at night. They're taking care of us at night. They're making sure that we are sheltered. They're making sure that we're taken care of at night. And he said, this is very strange. I've never seen this when it comes to war. Your opposition wants you to die. Here, these people, their opposition are taking care of us, they're showing us hospitality. So that is when he began to change his mindset about these kind of people. And then he came across some Jewish people and they began to inform him about this place, the sacredness of Yathrib and so forth. And so he says, you know what, you two people seem like you can educate a lot of people. You have so many of your type here in, in Yathrib. Why don't you travel with me to Yemen? And so they went, they tra began to travel southwards. They stopped in Mecca. He, f he was inquiring about what Mecca is. They said, this is what Mecca is, the place where the, uh, it was built by Ibrahim and his son, alayhi salam. And then he went to Yemen. And these two people, these two Jewish rabbis accompanied him to Yemen. And they taught Jewish um, faith and so forth, converted many people. And by the way, this is why even when you go to Yemen today, there's a very big Jewish community there till today in Yemen. You go to Yemen, there's a very big Jewish community there till today, by the way. So anyway, the point is this. At that time, while he was living in Yemen, he began to inquire from these people that, why were you living in Yathrib? And they said that we have come across, you know, what we have find in our Torah, that there was a, there's a man by the name of Ahmad who will come eventually here. And this is one of the names of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He will eventually come in Yathrib and we are waiting for him. Tubba began to study about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he began to fall in love with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Whatever he has studied in the previous scriptures, he began to admire him. So what Tubba did was that he also came back to Medina and he began to reside in Medina. And what he did was that he built a house. He said, I'm going to build a house for this man Muhammad, peace be upon him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And whenever he comes, I'm going to be the one who's going to entertain him. And SubhanAllah, he wrote even a letter for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam that this is who I am and this is a house for you and I'm one of your you know supporters I believe in you and so forth I believe in your message and this is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam he mentions there's a hadith in Musnad Ahmad that uh, that Tubba do not curse Tubba Tubba was a Muslim he mentions this but at the same time you have to understand that the word Tubba is in reference to any Yemeni king just like in Egypt every single king is known as Pharaoh, but there's one particular Fir'aun which was the Fir'aun of Musa alayhi salam, you understand? But everyone else was considered as a, as a Fir'aun also. But likewise in Yemen, any king was considered as a Tubba, but there's, there's a particular Tubba here. But nonetheless, he says that I'm going to build a house, he wrote a letter, and while he began, he was about to pass away, 
at that time is mentioned that he began to, he, he gave this letter and he says that I'm going to pass away. I probably will not see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but please make sure that this letter does get to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And there are some historical records that we find that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, SubhanAllah, via Wahi, he was informed about this. That in late, and later on in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he actually was given this letter by, um, by someone else from Medina. It got passed on from generation to generation and it was brought to the Prophet ﷺ. Now, now we come to current day, which was the Hijrah time. The Prophet ﷺ once again is on his animal and he stops at the house of Abu Ayyub Ansari. An. The question is why the house of Abu Ayyub Ansari? Because Abu Ayyub Ansari was one, is one of the people amongst the ancestry of Tubba. Okay, interestingly, Tubba built up this place. He built this house for the Prophet Sallallahu He could not see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, Subhanallah, He made sure that one of the people in the family of Tubba, in the ancestry of Tubba, would become a sole possessor of this house. They would become a Malik of this house, and then eventually the same animal stopped at the same house, which was built by Tubba which was built, which was at that time resided, or it was being um, uh, there, uh, we, uh, Ayyub Ansari radiallahu an, was residing over there. So it's a very interesting story if you think about it, that who this man was, he built something, but what's the key lesson in all this? First of all, you understand now how history works, now you understand why Abu Ayyub Ansari radiallahu an, a very interesting story, but here's the key thing. When you make a very good intention, to ba probably he knew he would not see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But he made an intention. And he had, since he was sincere in his intention. He was trying to do something that is good. So here's the thing. A lot of times we, are, we want to do something that is good. And it may impact someone else. But because you and I, we may not see the effects of that impact, we give up. Don't ever give up if you want to do anything that is good. You do something that is good and perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring the fruits uh, of your hard work many years later and someone else may benefit from, from your hard work. You know, there was a scholar who gave a very good example that when you study science, when you study science, what happens to water? Water evaporates, right? But usually when the water does evaporate into the clouds and so forth, then usually the, that same cloud, it doesn't drop the water, it doesn't pour the water on that same locality again. It moves around and then it will bring it down the rain on some other community. Likewise, whenever good that we do, we may not see the impact where we are at, where we're working at, but the impact may be affected or the impact may be somewhere else. So whenever you want to do something that is good, do something that is good. Go through the good that you want to do. And perhaps if you have a good intention, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring your results into fruition inshallah and someone down the road will benefit. You make dua, probably the effects of your dua will not be done now. The effects of your dua will take place sometime later. But don't ever underestimate any good that you want to do inshallah. Just like I shared the story of this man Tubba, he built a house, he was gone from this dunya, years and decades uh, had gone by and then year after all that then Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he had the intention and subhanAllah Allah made that exactly happen. Allah fulfilled his intention by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam staying over there and by the way this was as I said it was right there next to Masjid Nabawi and at that time Masjid Nabawi did not even exist at that time. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he bought that piece of land from two orphan kids and he established Masjid Nabawi over there first. And then history keeps on going on. So just some history also, also a lesson in all this for also when it comes to intention and the sincerity of intention. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make uh, us amongst those who uh, learn from these kind of stories to apply the benefits of these stories in our life. Amin Rabbil Alameen. Wa jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. إن المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات والقانتين والقانتات والصادقين والصادقات والصابرين والصابرات والخاشعين والخاشعات والخاشعين والخاشعات والمتصدقين والمتصدقات والصائمين والصائمات 
والحافظين فروجهم والحافظات والذاكرين الله كثيرا والذاكرات أعد الله لهم مغفرة وأجرا عظيما